Good morning, we have a Jono. Welcome to the Three Moms of the Apocalypse. All three of us are here this morning, beware. <laughs> and it is early morning when we're recording this, and I am the only morning person in the so Three Moms. Just so you guys know, early morning for me and Courtney is 10 a.m. <laughs> I'm a theater person. I'm not used to seeing the world before noon. No. 10 is a real struggle. But we're yes. here for you guys. We're here so. for you guys because we love you. And I've been up since 5.30 and this mocha had two shots of espresso in it. <laughs> and I love you. <laughs> so this is, this is my first cup of coffee for the day. This is my first cup of tea. It is not the first caffeine I've seen today. <laughs> Although I had help this morning. Yes. Because Henry. 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 Well, now the sun is coming up right in the window from my oh. bed. So I get a stab of sunlight at like 6.30. Mm -hmm. and, and which it, it prompts me to roll over, usually right. onto the pillow that Henry has claimed for his own. <laughs> and and I get, meow. It's like, just shut it, you little, mm. anyway. Yes. So. But that's not what the blazing sword keeping people out of the Garden of Eden is supposed to be. <laughs> really? The sunlight stabbing you in the eyes. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> Enlightenment <laughs> stabs you in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> Quite literally. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Congratulations, you're now enlightened. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I am a turn it off again. Turn it off. <laughs> I am a creature of the dark. <laughs> so my hair lights the way. I don't need more than that. No. So. I usually wake up in the dark and then it gets light. <laughs> I wake up in the dark too, but it stays dark. <laughs> so. <laughs> It's very odd. I've, I've slipped into the sleeping pattern. If I go to bed relatively early and read, and, and now since I'm busily working on a materials a degree in a month, um, mm -hmm. I have a project where I have to learn a whole lot about a whole bunch of engineering stuff, and it's daunting. But I'm, I'm reading a bunch of it every night before I go to bed because it puts me to sleep pretty fast. Um, mm -hmm. And then I wake up at like 3 in the morning, and I'm awake until about 5. Mm -hmm. I've, I've become very medieval in my sleep schedule. Yeah. And then I go back to sleep, much to the consternation of my cat. <laughs> so who then goes yeah. out in the hall and tells all the roommates about how annoyed he is about it. So well, sitting at directly outside my door. <laughs> which is wonderful. No, that's why I'm in the bathroom. Close the door and don't let him in. Oh yeah. So because cats, like toddlers, must be in the bathroom with you. Mm -hmm. Because you might fall in the toilet or something. I don't know. Object permanence. Object permanence is a thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. so whereas. I tend to work until two or three o'clock in the morning and here you get up and I hear Johnny get up and go, oh, it's time to go to bed. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. just so people know, we will not do a 24 seven live stream from the blanket fort. No. We've no. had a request for that, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> There's it some is. things that just need to remain a mystery. Mm. Yeah. So. <laughs> we, we, we might do a video of, of one of us getting tied up, um, but it will be an instructional video. Instructional. Safety matters. Oh, yes. You Safety know what? Matters. We have the perfect model for that. Oh, we do. I vote that we tie up Bethany. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so she can't <laughs> run away. <laughs> no, well, yes. Well, we have to trip her first. And then <laughs> I don't think we're going to have to trip Bethany at all. I, don't, I think she'll beat us to the floor. I think... <laughs> Most definitely beat us to the floor. <laughs> yes, honey. So I, was, I need to talk to Mona Lisa about selling tickets to the next time I put her in for a leather dress. So, uh -huh. yeah, that was pretty amazing how many likes that particular post got after Liberty Con. Uh -huh. I mean, she was just like, I love it when women wander up to me with things with lacing and go, help. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I get to tie you up today. Uh -huh. So, I mean, well. I, I have the benefit of being able to text you. <laughs> it's very cute. We'll be at conventions and, and I'll get this text out of the blues. Sad roommate noises. And that's all it is. Sad roommate noises. And I usually turn to somebody and it's like, pardon me, I have to go type Courtney. And I get to leave. And they're like, what? what? <laughs> so. I evidently got very lucky because my husband is SCA trained. So he knew what to do with a corset actually better than I did. Mm -hmm. The only time I, I had to ask a friend... Um, who is an interesting person and very, very um, autistic. And I was 
I crashed on his couch and was doing a steampunk festival in Massachusetts and I had to ask him for help with my corset and he had absolutely no idea and he was way too close to me for his personal comfort and I felt so bad <laughs> but I really needed to get tied into this thing <laughs> Yes. You know, we can make that into a panel mm -hmm. where we just show up with our corsets and say, okay, guys, come tie us up. And, well, and, yeah, how, and, how and the chat you? goes wild. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> with volunteers. Oh, oh, we know there would be volunteers. But yeah. it's, it is a, it's something that people need to learn. It's well, not... Yeah, it has to be done right. Yeah. Boots before corset. Boots, Boots before, before corset. corset. I'm Always. before corset. I mean, seriously, anything oh, yeah. you have to put on that requires bending before corset. Mm -hmm. Hell, and also, corset, corset not corset. against bare skin. No, don't, oh, do that. not mm -hmm. put the corset against bare skin. And and not only that, don't, if somebody faints in a corset, do not use a knife and cut them out because you can create a blood pressure drop that mm -hmm. can kill them. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. Mm, you loosen it. Yeah, that's actually that's actually a, a syndrome, um, compartmentalization syndrome. Yeah. And if um, someone's been in an accident where they have a heavy weight, part of a building, whatever, mm -hmm. on them, mm -hmm. you don't just yank it off of them because that can, they can go from conscious and talking to you to they're gone. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. all done. So. That's how I feel when Henry gets off me in the morning. I prefer it with something else entirely. So. <laughs> Yes. I'm really glad that we trained the dog not to get on the bed. Well, you know, because... just thinking, you know, if you have a, if, if you, hmm, just think how that applies in other ways. There's a reason women pass out at a certain point. So. Uh, Vega constriction. Well, I mean, I mean but the, the weight removes itself and then suddenly you're out. <laughs> yeah. You know. That's true. <laughs> it's like things we think about. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a scientific reason. Yes, there is. Of course you would know things. this, Cedar. I, <laughs> <laughs> there, there have been Tell my brain works. <laughs> there have been studies done, and I will say that there are several books out there with detailed roadmaps, and people who've read them are... Engineers are a glorious thing. Aren't they? They really are. I mean, people who really understand and study, mm. they are. How the systems they want to play with work. Yes. That's how I approached it, because I came to that point in my life being very very sheltered mm -hmm. and so when tell I tell us more about your early life cedar <laughs> because you didn't really get introduced you didn't that's all right I'm, we will we will explore each other as we go on with this exploration is fun that was that was a leading question <laughs> yeah i know it was. And, she's, and she's got i'm just gonna sidestep that uh -huh. so. no but uh, well, what i was gonna say <laughs> is that i got to a point in my very young adulthood mm. i was about 2021 20, and I needed to know more about I mean I grew up on a farm I know how things work tab a slab c whatever is it, it reproduction is a thing on a farm <laughs> yes I know <laughs> not the standard procedure but that's how things go okay <laughs> You start out thinking that it's going to go one way, and then you find out that there are so many other ways that it could go. Yes, yes. indeed. And there are not really any good books, or there wasn't 20 odd years ago, because that was my first instinct, was I wanted to get some good books that would tell me how to approach this from an engineering perspective, I guess. It's I, true. I, I've had a couple that were recommended to me. I can pass them I on. have had. I found a couple, but there weren't really... Any good ones? I mean, the the, the first mm -hmm. one that everybody recommends, or that it used to be that everybody recommends. I don't know about now. The Joy of Sex, I found yeah. just like mm, no, not no. <sighs> well, I mean, it, okay. it's it's very good for basic, basic, basic. It's right? sort of like Dick yeah. and Jane. No pun intended. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Dick and Jane Book of Sex. It's the Dick much. and Jane Book of Sex, but yeah. I mean, anatomy and physiology really matters. It does. It you does. Know? It really does. I mean, and and we oddly, strangely enough, are not taught these things, which is such such a sad and sorry thing. And, and, the, and like, the basics of it is taught in biology class, but since you're like fourteen, they don't go into the reasons behind it. No, like there's a plumbing lesson, but there's not like well, and and, and, you, and it's not appropriate for that age. But when it is appropriate. We're often. Do you remember we were talking about women as mentors? Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, and and 
talking about the anatomy thing, just recently it came up in talking about writing. Someone was describing they had read a scene in a book where the guy bent. And there are stages in Happy Fun Times where the guy should not bend. Oh. And if it does happen, well, that's a medical emergency. Which yes. Kelly has and he will tell you stories about. <laughs> Kelly has great Kelly stories. Kelly has great stories about that. I don't know if they're great stories. <laughs> I, I oh, think. the look <laughs> on my son's face when he was listening to them was... <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> well, I mean, just from from the woman's perspective, it's like you don't want to break him. You don't want to break him. You no. just don't want to break him. I mean, but and sometimes a little too much enthusiasm in the wrong direction can break things, and that yes. is not good. I'll say, a, a suddenly dislocated hip is not fun. No. Um, but breaking that it puts a lot of end to a lot of things for a long time. For too. a long time, still have to recover. That's not okay. So that's why I mean, the whole anatomy thing and approaching. Um, even something like having sex as an engineering process and mm-hmm. understanding the anatomy and physiology mm-hmm. will help everybody have a more fun time once you've digested all that information mm-hmm. and put it into practice. Geometry is a thing. Mm. It is. It really it is. is. Geometry is really a thing. And, and you very rarely have a bundle of nerves that's by itself that doesn't have other things around it that are also yes. stimulating. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. like, it's all inter- it's all interconnected. Mm-hmm. And you can, which is like, why I love acupressure massage. I'm going to hit you here and take away that pain over there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, oh, massage. I have two massage certificates. I need to go do that. Yes, you do. The other myth They're that delicious. I saw recently um and it was again talking about writing in a post um, in a writers group that we're all in. Um, <laughs> was I right? somebody I somebody that? said um, sex can never sex scenes can never be funny. And I'm like, oh honey, you oh, are my not God. having sex right. <laughs> I was gonna say, tell me you've not had funny sex. My God, <laughs> telling me you've had hilarious funny sex because damn, it's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Oh I mean, if you step back and think about it too much, it's it's hysterical. Um, I mean, you know those mirrors on the ceilings? Not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> you think I've never really done that, but then you're looking directly. At... <laughs> like, there is sometimes there's nothing about that that's a good thing. <laughs> it's like, but, but I the mean, last thing I want to see is myself <laughs> laid out on a bed because. Well, there, I mean, yeah. I don't mind that so much. <laughs> it's just there's a point at which some faces should not. I mean, <laughs> Well, and, and some some <laughs> geometry that's just like, why does that look like a frog to an <laughs> other side? <laughs> Which can be really distracting from what you're trying to achieve. <laughs> so it's like, I think I'd rather do the whole, I think I'll paint the ceiling beige than have like see a mirror up there. Right. So, it's like, oh, this is so hot. No, no it isn't. No. Medieval frescoes. <laughs> yeah, see, now that's inspiring. And the other component isn't just the physical, it's the mental. And yeah. you don't come into it with a sense of humor when something goes wrong. And it will, especially if you're in very inexperienced at the beginning. And you don't laugh at it, then you get traumatized by it. Mm-hmm. And that's not a that's good, not good outcome. either. No. That's not and, good and honestly, you have, no having... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm having 12. Fun. That's all right. <laughs> We all are. We all are, which I think is why the guys have such a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but having fun and laughing is is part of the the joy yes. of building that kind of intimate relationship. Yes, just, you know if you if you are just horribly embarrassed when something goes wrong. I mean, everybody farts, guys. It's it just, happens, it kind of, and it and happens, there's just some and sounds that, and that, that happen. <laughs> well, yeah. it's just like yep. <clears throat> and the dynamics involved. Uh, farting is going to happen. Mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> muscular and, and yeah. Nothing worse than a cramp. Oh. Uh, oh. Yes, and they're not always in the places you expect them to be. No. Mm-hmm. No. And it's and there's some of them, there's just no walking it out. Nope. I mean, there's just, and so what can you do besides just laugh, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's like. <clears throat> and, and learning, well, you know, the, and, and certain injuries can cause other issues. You know, I've, you know, her, I've hurt this shoulder five or six times at this point. Currently nursing a rotator cuff, yeah. But the muscles on here go up into your neck, and if you mm-hmm. mess with these too much, you, you hit it wrong, and you get instant migraine. Yeah. Now, oh, do no. that in the middle of happy fun time. No, <laughs> takes a screaming orgasm to just screaming. Yeah, yeah, it's that's so like sad, that. right? It's that's like the so worst. Sad. And it's and and someone who thinks they're doing a really good job, and then all of a sudden you're screaming in pain. That's gonna hurt them. Well, too. yeah, I mean, so. it's just. 
Well, and that's the other thing, too, is that there has to be a lot of communication beforehand. Mm -hmm. So if you know that there are certain issues, like, um, for instance, if you get a case of uncontrollable giggles at a certain point. <laughs> which, yeah. You should probably <laughs> warn them so you can assure them that, you know, you're not laughing at them. It's just it's not laughing a, at you. I'm it laughing is a with you. nervous reaction that happens when things well, get to certain points. <laughs> I'm very ticklish right here and right here. And that's not an invitation. Be, right? So. Right. Yes. Do not have pet the human without... Right. <laughs> Without permission. <laughs> right. Prior consent. You know what I have found over my many, many years, because I, I get to be the old one here, is that I find that women are very open about sexuality. They're very open about sex. We're, we're downright raunchy. Yeah. You know, and <clears throat> it's like, and I know guys are like, do not go in the bathroom with those three women. <laughs> and it's like, honey, we don't need a bathroom. We'll just sit here at the bar. <laughs> give, like, give us enough drinks and give us a topic. We'll, we'll, go, yeah, we'll go. But I, I think, I think. Too often men are expected to be the masters of their universe and know everything, and that's just not the case. Mm -mm. You know, I mean, a lot of young women think they just need to lie there and look pretty. I'm like, oh no, honey, uh-uh, not enough, get busy. So You're, you're not a sub, you're lazy. Yeah. Oh, mm. oh that's a great line. <laughs> yeah. I want that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Yeah, it's like if you just uh, expect some guy who is the same age as you, 20, right. to have oh magically God. know everything, that's just ridiculous. That is no. unfair. And, and you have to be able to talk about it. And, and you have, have to be able to talk about it. And you it. have to know enough about yourself to be able to talk about it. And yes. I'll tell you quite honestly, they don't care if you have a little bit of muffin top. Nope. They some don't. No. A lot of them consider that a perk. Yes. I'm, I'm okay. So I would just like to state for the record, I'm a satin covered down comforter and I'm a woman you can get a serious <laughs> grip on. So, they, and I, I don't mind bruises and I, I really appreciate a good strong man, right? So, um, redheads, we bruise if you look at us funny, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I bruise no matter what, but it's also a case of, of yeah, you don't have to be a supermodel. Mm -mm. Men are remarkably it's, appreciative. It comes mm -hmm. it, again. It comes back to oral sex communication. Mm -hmm. It's all about the talking and the meeting of the minds. How did we end up bodies. here this morning? I don't know how we came. We up always here end up here. We <laughs> always end up here. I mean, really. But, you know, we were talking about the women mentors thing, yeah. and mm -hmm. this is continuing conversation we had off camera the other day. Yeah, which we is, have the really great conversations that we should just turn our phones on for and record, right? Mm -hmm. Because they just randomly happen. Yeah, so. But when I was a young woman and got married, and there's, I mean, my first marriage, there was a lot of things that were not good, and we'll probably get into that more in detail later, but to begin with, I wanted an older female mentor in the worst way. I needed somebody to teach me how to, or to model for me, how to be a, a good wife, a mother, a, an adult female human being mm -hmm. and I didn't have anything like that and having somebody that I could have had frank conversations like this about mm -hmm. sex and what happens in the bed bedroom when the lights turn off or on as the case may be mm -hmm. um, I didn't have that and I could have used that and so that's true. why we yeah. have these conversations in front of the camera right well, because it's yeah. it's super important and one of the things that one things my son loves about coming and hanging out with me at different conventions and different places is I'll get we'll get drunk and with my friends and we start giving him dating advice. <laughs> <laughs> he loves that, or was there a little it's, sarcasm from there? <laughs> Actually, no, he he really does because um, one of the things that you know, uh, Murder Kit and I have sat down with him and said, okay, if you cannot talk about what you like and what she likes over coffee without hormones involved, mm -hmm. you are not ready to have that kind of relationship with this person. Absolutely. And, you know, we've, we've given him advice on how, you know, picking a partner and how to approach that and what to do, what, how to know when you're ready to be in that kind of a relationship. Because he is, um, he is not a prude, but he's also very conscious about what, happens in relationships what happens in the future mm -hmm. um so he's going to be he's very picky um has selective very yes he's very selective, I think selective is a better word mm -hmm. yeah you know, screening for attributes he's that he likes yeah. and he's looking for right i think picky implies uh, that's the word i was thinking about the other day when we were talking about it mm -hmm. pick, 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 pick. It, it, it implies less than mm -hmm. right it's, it's, I think it's more in terms of screening. Right. Yeah. And he's, he's looking for a good partner and a good mate uh, mm -hmm. because he knows what he wants and he knows what he wants to do with his future. There you go. Um, 
And he is wise beyond his years. Yeah. I mean, I, I've gotten to know him well enough. I, I think he is wise you that he is. in his years that in other other kids have not had the education they need. Yeah. And he, he ends up being the person all of his friends go to for advice and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, because we've he's sat there at 15 while well, Murder Kitten and I just... Okay, now... No. <laughs> Did well, not so give him the anatomy lesson, but it was very much a, if you bring home someone we don't like, she will disappear and you will not find her. <laughs> well, I think also that falls into the women mentoring yeah. thing. You know, it's, when I was uh, working at the high school, we had writing groups and in this mm-hmm. school, there you know, 15 kids for each teacher that stayed with them throughout the whole four years they were there. Mm-hmm. The school is 75% girls. I had nine guys in my group. They gave me all the angry young men, mm-hmm. all of them. Um, of course, I was the oldest woman working at the school. I was also the frankest woman working at the school and weirdly the most conservative. <clears throat> but I had all these guys mm-hmm. that who were teenage boys who were taught that the only way they can express any emotion is through anger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, who were being raised by children because they're mostly from single moms. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and having having to be the man of the house before they understood what that meant. Yeah. And not having an older woman who could teach them how to be around other women. Mm-hmm. Or girls, or any of that. Yeah, I mean, it was like suddenly I'm a mom to nine guys, which was and 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 because of mine clang, they couldn't hit me when I really pulled them up. <laughs> so <laughs> no, but it's true. They didn't have that stronger, older woman mm-hmm. correcting their mm-hmm. behavior yeah. and helping them understand what a woman looked like as opposed to what a girl looks like. Mm-hmm. So well, there is a cultural resonance. In many, many cultures where the older woman is the mentor of the matriarch. Mm-hmm. And I think even when that's not explicitly taught, it's part of our human makeup. Yeah. And not, not the smothering mother, but the one that helps you stand on your own two feet and pushes you out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's and there's tropes of um, the grandmothers, but also the crazy aunt who encourages you to step out of your comfort zone. <laughs> <laughs> Hands go up. Yeah. How many tropes do you belong to? See, right. I prefer that to how many diagnoses do you have? It's like right. how many tropes are you? you? Belong, right. <laughs> I'm the vodka ants. I will be. You know, I'm. I am anti Courtney, um, but I am. And I'm okay with that. Like with, you know, the the teenage because we go into a place and the teenagers just like stick to me, and I'm like, <laughs> where did you come from? I did not give birth to you. Um, but they're. The and I just scare the, the shit out of them. Yeah. So, you know. And they, like, I don't make them talk. I don't make them interact. But if they're, like, right there, it's like, okay, I'll, you know, pet your hair and, like, give you a hug. And, and you're going to hear stuff, and they know that. Mm-hmm. But it's not, um, it, it's not a bad thing. And that's the, the pet your hair and give you a hug thing. Mm-hmm. Physical touch is so over-sexualized in the culture that yes. we live in now mm-hmm. that it makes people uncomfortable and twitchy when you touch them and sometimes it takes a little time to teach them that no this is just human contact and Mm -hmm. it's okay and you don't have to read all the things into it yeah Yeah. and i think that our children um and teenagers in particular i mean hormones puberty it's a mess Mm -hmm. um i mean you're just one giant hormone for so many years in your teen years it's just so and it's so uncontrollable and your brain is developing and everything's weird and all your edges are wrong and and just and, and so many guys that are physical contact is yeah. so important. It, it is. It and really is. So many is. guys are taught that the only the only time you can touch somebody else is if you're trying to get sex. Yeah. Or if you're trying them. To, or, or hitting them. You have you have violence or, or sex, which a lot of times turns in you know, you get violence, violence and sex. sex. Yeah. But honestly, how many men I know personally who are mm-hmm. absolutely desperate for for a soft place to fall, a, mm-hmm. a comforting hug, a snuggle, yeah. something that's non-sexual, that's just, just come here and let me hold you. Yeah. You know, and, and they just, they're... And you can't get them to accept it. Well, you can, but... but it takes time. It takes patience. time and honesty and like, don't want to, I don't want to fuck you. I just mm-hmm. come here. You're in pain. Just let me hug you. Yeah. So just let me wanna, hold you. If you want to learn how to do this, go on YouTube and find videos of people taming feral kittens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, oh, it's so much food, like that, isn't it? Food. Okay, you so I fail in that department. Completely <laughs> fail in the food department. 
I mean, it's like, but I, I don't there's, do there's food around. No, but I, I, I don't can, think it's always physical food either. Yeah, true. It's nurturing. It's a different kind of feeding and, and coming at them with a different direction. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, we know a lot of men who've seen some stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I go sit on the on the porch at Liberty Con and I listen to these guys who, you know, you talk about those stories where people look at you and go, oh my God. <laughs> They're just like, whatever. And, and, we're, and they're telling them for five and six hours out on the smoker's yeah, porch. Yeah, and you and know, mm-hmm. and more than anything, what I want to do is just walk around behind them, just give them hugs, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, and pat their shoulders and, and yeah. scratch their backs mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and let them know that it's actually okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because I mean, the the amount of pain expressed in that cathartic moment of no shit, there I was, mm-hmm. is yeah. is huge, even though it's told with humor. Yeah. So, but well, but, but as a woman, I feel like. As an adult woman, my space is to give a man who's lived through something like that a warm, safe space to be mm-hmm. that in, that doesn't where they can just let all that down. Where they they're, where they and where they really are safe. Where they're really safe. Yeah. And there's no no stupid girl game and and passive aggressive bullshit. Mm-hmm. Just the warmth of a warmth of a woman holding them mm-hmm. after all of that agony. Yeah. Is is I think that's something that has been lost in a lot of our fourth wave feminism crap mm-hmm. is that the recognition of that is is so incredibly important to men that we are mm-hmm. the safe space we are the safe soft place mm-hmm. yeah and, and that and and if you if you train yourself hard and tough you're no longer that soft place to land yeah we also have moments where we have to be hard and tough mm-hmm. oh, i wouldn't know anything about that but it's <laughs> We are all the things. We mm-hmm. contain all the things. We contain all the things. That strength and, I mean, I had four kids. There were times I felt like I contained multitudes. <laughs> um, but we I have that strength. I don't know how you did strength. four. One just about killed me. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> four and I did three at home. No meds. Um, just, I, I honestly, I look at it sometimes and I'm like, I don't remember necessarily being in pain. I remember being extraordinarily tired. And just like, can we stop? Has it (laughs) stopped? He's 17 (laughs) and a half, almost 18. (laughs) Almost. (laughs) And he's the last one. (laughs) And then then empty nest. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. See, I I kind of envy you your, your normal birth experience. Because I didn't have one. I know, so. and and it's and that's the other thing that I fight against. Because I did have four, three of them at home with no meds. Um, the fourth, I was in the hospital because I wanted to take a break from the first three, and he wound up because typical male, he got lost on the way out. <laughs> They that, to, that, like, leaves some interesting anatomy questions on the table. <laughs> we'll just walk away. His, his head was crooked. Oh. They actually had to push him back in oh, he, and So he wasn't asking out. for directions, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> kind of sideways. I'm going to cut our old elbow first. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, and then, of course, and I breastfed all of them. The only one that ever had a bottle was my youngest daughter because she's so stinking independent the minute she figured out that she could carry the bottle with her and go and do her own thing she was gone 10 mm-hmm. months weaned herself bottle boom and wow but yeah i know <laughs> she's scary sometimes well it's okay she um, should meet my kid <laughs> um, but the, but then i get these moms that talk to me and they're like oh i wish i could it all oh part of normal mothering and Mm -hmm. the fact that we have the technology now to okay that baby's not going to come out right let's kill go in there and get that baby out and keep both of you safe Mm -hmm. and we're done Mm -hmm. that was so i was i was trying to do as much naturally as possible with with my kids um which well um you know logan was a week overdue and they found out that he hadn't turned he was so long they thought his head was his butt (laughs) So <laughs> I'm not going to tease you about that. <laughs> oh no, we, we've we've got long term joke ha, on that one. There, there's some okay. There were, well, but, but his head was like almost directly underneath my heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they had and his and his heart rate like plummeted when they were going. It's like okay, what's going on? Like we can turn him or we can go in and get him. Yeah. and then his heart rate went down, and I'm like, get him out, get him out, get him out, get him out, yep. get him out. Yeah, and so it's like you guys have all of that, and I don't well, have any of that. It was because yours was premature. Well, you no, know, it's like I was not supposed to be able to have children mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. at all. Well, yeah, Logan no was room in... at the end, right? <laughs> and so it, when I was four months pregnant, when I found out I was pregnant, mm-hmm. and then eight weeks later, I had a baby. 
so and that's no time at all. I to get for eight weeks. Well, when that. you've gone from I will never have children to hey, guess what? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it's like being lost on a map. You know, if, if you're lost in a place and then you suddenly figure out where you are and you're 180 degrees away from where you thought, and your entire head goes, yeah. and I was like, what do you mean? I what? Huh? You know, exceedingly high risk. And she tried to kill me, mm-hmm. and has not stopped. Um, but <laughs> and also, that's a train, by the way. Mm-hmm. That's a train gone by. But they, they've heard it before. Yeah, but I always like to let them know why there's weird noises. Yeah, but what's <laughs> for me? It was like I didn't. I mean, a two. She was two pounds thirteen ounces when she was born. Mm-hmm. She was the size of a large bullfrog. Mm-hmm. You know, even though she was sixteen inches Changed long, up. she was literally like she's like coffee. She could have curled up in my coffee cup, mm-hmm. and I didn't see her for quite some time because I was yeah. in ICU with liver failure, lucky yeah. me. But I did not have that whole experience. You didn't, and you didn't get that bonding experience. No, I did not. It was really struggled. It actually that. happened later, which yeah. was kind of funny. Uh, but I did not get the whole like, you know, you had the birthing experience, you know, you go to the classes with all the other pregnant women and you didn't know, do that either, bowling, bo- but you know, I didn't <laughs> yeah. do the bowling ball thing, which I will say I did not miss. Because <laughs> <laughs> Two pound baby on me. My jeans had just gotten snug, uh-huh. you know, and I was like, "Baby, so I mean, in that, yeah, it's a plus." Yeah. But it also removed me from the experience of being able to share that with other women, yeah. Because you know, I joined a mom's group, and all of them had the normal experience, mm-hmm. and they had no context for me. Yeah. But it's all equally valid, and I get kind of mm-hmm. frustrated because I know that a lot of people assume when they hear my story, they're all like, oh, the, the crunchy granola mom kind of thing. No. No. Just just the way I am and the way I approach life was yeah. like, I'm not sick, so I don't need to go to the hospital. Mm-hmm. And although it's a good thing I did go with my son because we, there was medical inter- intervention required for him. Mm-hmm. But we didn't know that. Um, and then with the breastfeeding, I'm like, it's here, might as well use it. Free, cheap, easy, boom, mm-hmm. right. done. So, but... But there are moms that can't, that have yeah. more like your story. Yeah. yeah. They so we can't breastfeed for whatever mm-hmm. reason. Mm-hmm. Well, I did actually breast pump. Oh, guys, we're not going there, especially with fluffy e-cows as part of our thing. <laughs> 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 we will segue off that topic into right. something else because well, no. So I, I know I know, I did I did breastfeed with my son, but my daughter, I ended up having to have three surgeries almost immediately after. Really? I did not know that. Um, it, it was because she, we... She was a, supposed to be born on September 11th. We were not going to have September 11th as a birthday, so mm-hmm. she was born on September 7th. My son was October 7th. I did, yeah, well, three sevens in a row. You stop playing, um, but damn had, girl, <laughs> <laughs> I hit the jackpot. Yeah. I was gonna say, you just just turn in the chips and right? run away. I was like, no, so. we're good. And that's, that's actually one of the things that we had to do. Is like we had to go in and because they with they had to fix things and reconstruct. And I had still ended up trying to bleed to death for a year yeah and that's so good and we'll so like that so like after six weeks where i was in for another surgery they're like we're just gonna put her on the bottle and then we find out she's allergic to everything and well, there mm-hmm. you go and so we had to find unique ways to to feed her that did not involve milk of any kind mm. soy mm. or corn mm. and all of those are your like, primary f- <laughs> find a formula yeah <laughs> It is weird, isn't it? I mean, yeah. the, the things that we, just as moms that we deal with. Mm-hmm. I mean, because we could talk a lot about just children and raising them, too. And we probably yeah. will. And we probably will. Like, I knew my daughter was trouble with in the very first day in the in the NICU. And I see you. They had her a little oxygen hood. And I wasn't there for this. But she was on her back, and they had all this stuff on her and everything. You know, she looks like a little robot with the, out of post-apocalyptic whatever. She reached across and grabbed the edge of the oxygen hood and yanked and flipped herself over first day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was like a really good indication of what I had ahead of me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and it, yeah. Logan rolled, rolled himself over like the first two days getting yeah. him home because he just he was not comfortable. He wanted to be so. By God, he was going to be somewhere else. Like, all right, you know, I appreciate you. that moxie. You know, it's it's a lot of times they they try to beat that out of children, and I just mm-hmm. really love that, even yeah. though it's exhausting. Oh, it's oh my gosh, yes, <laughs> right. But it, it it helps them as they get when mm-hmm. as they get older. It's if you can cultivate and help them direct it which is the yeah you know exhausting we spend, part as women we spend a lot of time talking about birth experience mm-hmm. and then we spend a lot of time talking about our kids but we also don't t- something we don't talk about and i got thrown out of my birth to three group four was mm-hmm. the societal change that gets imposed upon you as a woman when you become a mother yeah i have spent the last 24 years 
as somebody's mom. You know what? That was my name. I was somebody's yeah. mom. Mm-hmm. I was this one's mom. I was that one's mom. I was that one's mom. And you know what? That one's mom. Every time someone said that to me, every single time, because I resented it hugely, because mm-hmm. I have a tendency towards independence. Um, <laughs> we hadn't noticed. <laughs> I would say, that is not my name. I am not Katie's mother. My name is Jonna. I also happen to be Katie's mother. But you will not refer to me as Katie's mother. You will call me Jonna. Mm-hmm. And I, I just constantly corrected people about that because it is, in many ways, it, it you lose your individuality as a woman when mm-hmm. you become a mother. And you're supposed to just subsume yourself to how wonderful it is. It's like, there's nothing wonderful about babies. They shit on you. They're latched on to you. They don't give a fuck if you've got no sleep. They're tiny little tyrants. Mm-hmm. And and really, when people are like, oh, I want to have a baby, it'll be so great. It's like, you have no idea. <laughs> because, and yeah, it's wonderful because of, of the brain chemicals that convince you you like them. Mm-hmm. Because oxytocin is the only thing that keeps a lot of babies from dying. Um, <laughs> They're just so stinking cute. We can't help ourselves. Well, I mean. Even when sometimes. <laughs> mine looked like Marty Feldman when she was born. So, <laughs> no, seriously. She had gigantic blue eyes mm-hmm. in this little tiny skull because eyes tear anyway. But, yeah. but I looked at her. My very first thought, and I've told my daughter this, and, and she understands. because She thinks it's hilarious, too. Uh, so I looked at her, and I went, I have given birth to Marty Feldman. <laughs> <laughs> um, which, I mean, and she's got great eyes. she got mine. So, yeah. but we lose who we are in yeah. a lot of ways. Society stops thinking of us as women, standalone women. Mm-hmm. We become... We become moms. We become but moms. It's because we, we've added another dimension to who we are. Yes. And, and a lot of people only look at that one spot. Yes. Yeah. And... And, and there's that, and more. That's the thing that we have to struggle for is mm-hmm. making sure that we get all those dimensions. Yeah. The being the safe space for our men. Mm-hmm. The being the mom, which is not necessarily being a safe space for our children. No. no. Um, my son the other day, I had, um, I had told him to go look something up. He goes, "You suck," and I'm like. Yes, yes, I do. It's my job to make you get this information into your head. And that was followed up with a pterodactyl screech from him as he left for his computer to go look it up. Because we're not the safe space for our children. Well, it, you know, my, it's not my, our job to be their friends. Yeah. No. When at 19, you know, I, my son is asking questions about how to do citations for a paper. And, you know, I get, so I get the message at midnight of hey I'm, i need i have to turn this in in five minutes can you help me do this <laughs> Bib me. Me. <laughs> there you go. Like, i will walk you through how to do this um but, and it was because his the instructions were unclear it was like we need citations Ooh. what Ooh. kind of site what form of citations oh, that's well, not just whatever and no. i'm like no whatever is not okay so i'm like i'm gonna go beat your professor but beyond you know <laughs> but you know so we i walk him through it takes five minutes and then i spend two and a half hours talking to him about his day yeah like what he's yeah. doing what he's going up to like he's i i don't like babies i don't like taught like i will hold babies and i can uh, i you know i can see the baby with the best of them but i don't like toddlers and i don't like 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 little little humans i, I like some of like our little six humans to are, ten is yeah. a really fabulous age. They're learning everything. Because they're learning everything, and, and they haven't been crushed yet. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's no Ophelia's... Oh, my God. Anyway, right. Reviving Ophelia is a fabulous book for teenage girls. But um, but it's... It's, they, they're just they're just in the world. Mm-hmm. They're just completely in the world in a way that, I mean, I would love to be all the time, and I strive to hang on to. Mm-hmm. Um, and they will say the most outrageous things. And, and I'm like, I will take this as a hint. <laughs> I think I've taken that to heart. But I, it's like, I, for one, am really looking forward to the next phase of my life where I get to encounter small children and enjoy them enormously and then hand them back to their parents, whoever that happens yes, to be. I like to give them a new sticky supply. Because like, every kid I, comes with a sticky supply and sometimes they exhaust it, so you have to help them find a new yes. one. So I, I love sugar and glitter. And <laughs> I love teenagers. Like, teenagers are just like, oh, man, they're, they're, they're best. almost, they're like proto adults. Mm-hmm. Well, they're, they're, they're so young fun. humans. And they're trying so hard to be in the world. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to learn. I loved teaching at the high school because. Wow, teenagers and great music too. Oh, oh God, yeah, great music. I've got great music from right, from the but kids. it's it's also that they're old enough that you can actually sort of reason with them if they're not yours, mm-hmm. um, because they're not trying to separate from you. But they're also, I mean, 
they're just they're in the world in a, a in a, such a seeking and wonderful way. Mm-hmm. If if they're not being sullen and and it's like oh I'm being ironic, I'm like no you're being lazy. Yeah, like <laughs> um, and you and if you're not their parent, you can usually get them out of that by just being kind of mean. And, and it's fun. It's right? fun to be mean to teenagers. <laughs> but like one of the things I love about <laughs> right. I mean your poor son. <laughs> your poor son. Every time he comes around. <laughs> Her son will walk in and say something. Well, I brought my truck and I said, whose truck? It's not your truck. Stop that shit. You know, it's like, well, I don't like these chairs. When you were getting your chairs, we, mm-hmm. we helped Cedar find some beautiful chairs for her oh, house. lovely chairs. And we're like, these are fabulous. So her poor son shows up to give us like, I don't like those chairs. And I'm like, who think, why do you think your opinion matters one tiny bit? They are and not he just kind of looked at me and said, you are here to be labor. Put them in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just cleaned my truck. I said, whose truck? <laughs> and he was like, I'm just going to be quiet now. It's like yes. Smart boy. It's, it's really good for him. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and that's what I was going to say, too, which <laughs> is that it. kids interacting with adults that aren't their parents yes. is, mm-hmm. is a really good thing because often they will listen better. I mean, mm-hmm. I think yeah. this is why apprenticeship programs are the bomb. Yes. Because you can hand your kid off to somebody else that they might actually listen to and learn mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. because you get to a point and they stop wanting too. Although I will say that it's been lovely the last few months watching my son open up to his stepfather, my husband, yeah. because their relationship when they first got together was very antagonistic when they first came together in life. And now to be kind of laying there half awake, half asleep, because I go to bed incredibly early, because I get up incredibly early <laughs> <laughs> to bring us so back sorry. to where we started. I'm so um, sorry. <laughs> but I'll be laying there half asleep and listening to the little guy the guy rumble conversation in the office next to my bedroom Mm -hmm. and i don't know what they're talking about because i can't hear them that well but i can tell their two voices apart and listening to them talk and then the voices aren't going in angry tones and it's fantastic i love that something i was just thinking of that just occurred to me it's like you guys have all seen the guy nod right Mm -hmm. where guys kind of walk up to each other and do this like they look each other down and go "Mm." right the guy nod yeah yeah I mean, is there? Do you think there's an equivalent girl nod or woman nod? Hmm. I was just thinking about that. Yeah. You don't know. I, have just, to I mean, it's it's kind of yeah. fascinating to me because I watch guys do it all. Mm-hmm. They call it old guying. You know, they yeah. have this thing where they just kind of walk up and they do a little like. And I can tell with Ian and Jim and the gang, they're usually checking to see how many things the guys carry in. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> it's like, you know, and and if they pass muster of the guy nod. You know, it's you. You check, and, and I've I've done this. You you check their collar to make sure their tag is in. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. check to make sure that yes. their that their shirts not that you're not uh-huh. showing anything that they don't want to. Like mm-hmm. if you can tell it's artful, then you know it's artful. Yeah. Uh-huh. But like uh, it's like sweetheart, you need to you know, mm-hmm. showing right there, and you check their shoes to make sure that there's nothing stuck to them. Yeah, but it's or also that there's not like flyaways at the hem. Yeah, well, and, and it's because because you, you look and then you acknowledge mm-hmm. and like it, it, because if you have to if you have to adjust something you can walk up to someone and go oh your collar's out mm-hmm. I, yeah and I yeah. never ask I just do it which well. kind of gets me in trouble sometimes but <laughs> but I can pull mom out of that yeah. one but it's it's there's a there's kind of this guy recognition of like okay you'll do mm-hmm. yeah and it's I was trying to think of as women do we even do that. Really. I know the European culture, there's a whole lot of cheek kissing. Mm-hmm. And in the culture I grew up in, there's a whole lot of hugging. Mm-hmm. When you mm-hmm. see someone, even if you've seen them earlier in the day, you hug one another. Mm-hmm. Which took me a long time to be okay with because I did not grow up in a very physically contact kind of environment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so the whole hugging thing was like, mm. but then I got to the point where I enjoy it and now I'm a hugger. So, mm-hmm. But I think, I mean, they're like... Saturday when we all get together for supper, you guys come in and it's usually like, hey, and if I have something to say or, or talk to mm-hmm. about you guys, but I don't know that there's a specific like signal that we give each other. Yeah, I know. It's it's kind of, it's fascinating to me. Mm-hmm. It's And I think it's part of, guys can be part of a group and acknowledge they're part of a group. It's sort of like and, cats. I yeah. Mean, I mean, they, they're all like, they, all the cats are in the same spot mm-hmm. and nobody's talking to each other, but they're all okay with it. Mm-hmm. And guys do that, which personally sometimes I find very comforting. Yes. I mean, I love the back porch at gyms because I get people overwhelmed really easily because I spend most of my time alone, you know? Mm. And so if Jim has like 25 people for dinner <laughs> and I, I walk in the door and everybody's in the kitchen, there's like 15 people in the kitchen, I'm like, I have to go to the porch now. Mm-hmm. So I go to the porch and very often Sanford is sitting there and mm-hmm. we don't even talk to each other. We just sit down. Yep. And I'm just like, 
And at my house, it's the front porch. Yeah. Because that's where Sanford's retreat spot is. Yeah. And, and I find that the guys do that a lot better than women seem to. Mm-hmm. That, or girls. Because girls, I, I find that chattery. Not that we don't. But I mean, it's also, they, they find a need to fill space with verbal things. And it's very high mm-hmm. pitched. And you can t- and it's high pitched uh, because they're anxious. And you can... Anxious and sometimes I think excitement also comes mm-hmm. apart. So if they're mm-hmm. happy, yeah. then their voices go up too. Mm-hmm. Yes, but I will say a gaggle of what I refer to as girls, not women. Mm-hmm. Um, oh my God. Oh. Look at your <laughs> <Yeah>. first. Oh <laughs> my God. Where did you get your lashes? Oh my, your hair is so great. I'm just like, <laughs> get away from me. I mean, oh, and, it's and, like, and with my name being Courtney, I can, in fact, do the, the Valley Girl thing. Well, I can do it, heard. too. But it's like... But, <laughs> but I, I, want to I run, don't want to. I want to run screaming right. from the space mm-hmm. because I... I ah. if, if you hear me doing it, it's because I'm making fun of somebody else. Yeah, I have a hard time not being sarcastic about it. Or like, I'm going to go get some scotch and mm-hmm. just go the other way. Because I don't do well in those, and I never have. No. I never have done well in those yeah. circumstances. No, and, and I, I can talk, I, I can do the, and it's a, it's a very superficial um, talk about, you know, where you got your nails done, who did your hair, and you know, all that stuff. I can do that because I know that they're trying to, they're, they're trying to find an opening to. They're seeking commonality. Do something mm-hmm. else. Yeah. And I find that I am, I am. And, and I am the, I am the electric level. eel in the bowl mm-hmm. of goldfish, and I, I there is nobody in the room, mm-hmm. and I'm I just it's like when I was when I got um, separated from my first husband, I was sharing my house with a supercuts hairdresser, and because I had a station wagon, they liked to go to the bar, all of the hairdressers <laughs> and me, <laughs> because I had the car, they would all fit in so they could get drunk mm-hmm. at at the and and I was just like. If you want to feel like an alien person, that's the way to do it. Because mm-hmm. I, mm, I just had no... Th- I, mm. Yeah. But this is why the broadcast came into being. Is yes. Because we have all found one another and discovered I that know. we actually work really well. We're all mm-hmm. odds together. Yeah. We're all odds, odds together. We're all odds together and all odds in our own way. Because, you know, you... I. I when I first met Jonna, <laughs> I, I turned to Jonna's first husband and said, you know, <laughs> <laughs> who happened to be there, which who people had not realized he was my first husband for a it while. It was which so was, funny. Which was uh, I knew, which I'm like, okay. It's like, you know what? She, Jonna's who I want to be when I grow up. And, and he's like, you know, that means being married to me for a while. And I go, it could be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have to keep him. Yeah, I don't keep him. But I'm, you know, mm. But it's like I don't. I aspire to be. I the, have the attitude, and I think I'm. I'm growing there. I don't lack for attitude. No, my but filter fell out at fifty. You're you're very comfortable with who you are. Yeah, there's there's a point which at which you just kind of it's you give up, because I mean the way I grew up, it was like I went to thirteen different grade schools. Mm-hmm. I mean I I was constantly the odd person out, and there's a point at which you just accept the fact that you are who you are, mm-hmm. uh, which should be well to get to. Um, and I, I just, I've also discovered that I, I pretty much just say what's on my mind because what are they going to do? Take away my birthday? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, so. And for the longest time, like, I, my teachers have referred to me by my mother's name in school. Oh. Like, I was Peggy's daughter, and then I was oh, James's. Then I was James's wife, and mm-hmm. then I was Logan's mom. It took me 35 years to develop my own. Mm hmm. Personality. I think that's not unusual for women. And it's in, and, and not in, yeah. because it's like I knew who I was, but nobody else knew who I was in relation to anybody else. Yeah. So, like, striking out and making it like, this is who I am, this mm-hmm. is what I do, was a real moment of, this is terrifying. Yeah, it is. It's absolutely terrifying. But it was. But you also have to accept nice. the fact that if you choose to be yourself, some people will not like you. And I you know what? That. That's okay. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. I know there's a lot of people who just don't like me. Uh, because I will pretty much tell you what I think, mm-hmm. but also you can always count on me to tell you what I think, mm-hmm. um, and which creates some unusual circumstances sometimes. <laughs> um, and also, I, I, I became very clear about what my boundaries are, and what mm-hmm. I'm willing to accept, and what I'm not. And yeah. that took me a lot longer to get to, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, because we are trained very often as women to accept all kinds of things that we should not. Yes, yes. Usually by our mothers. 
Well, who were actually, trained into their things as well. And that is an excellent topic for and the we next should time stop. we get and we'll together. Talk about that next time. Mm-hmm. Because boundaries is a whole thing of itself. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. I've got a business meeting in the city here shortly. So. I know. What time is it? How long have we nattered on? Um, a while. About 50 minutes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We've almost talked for an hour. We, we do this all well, the time. Yes. Um, so, okay, gang. There's there's like, we're, uh, whatever. Who knows where these are going? We just sit here and talk, guys. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. But we will be putting oh. these up on Wednesdays. Okay. So, something else mm-hmm. we were going to do. Yes. Is, is we were going to throw this out to you guys because... We know that we have lots of things we want to talk about, but also we were thinking of putting together a jar full of, of <laughs> yes. ideas of that if we don't know what we're talking about that day and haven't figured it out, mm-hmm. then we would just pull a thing out of a jar and go, okay, we're going to talk about this. Mm-hmm. Um, and I even have a pretty jar for that. Yes. So if you would like to, in the comments, um, silly topics are okay, but serious ones matter too. Mm-hmm. Um, add in, and here's Shauna playing with fabric again. Um, because I can't help myself. If you have an interesting texture, I will stroke you. <laughs> so, and on say, that note, <laughs> send we'll us some ideas and she's got to go. So. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys on Wednesday. Next Wednesday.